subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chanza Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 16th of February. Indian Prime Minister Modi hits out at opposition parties in poll bound Punjab state. Six months since Taliban take over Afghans hope for better future. And Nepal's Prime Minister backtracks on tabling US-funded MCC compact agreement. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday highlighted his government's development initiatives and hit out at opposition parties for mismanagement as he addressed an election rally in Pathan Court in Polbound Northern Punjab state. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi while addressing an election rally in Pathan Court in Polbound Northern Punjab state on Wednesday hit out at opposition Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party and said his government has prioritized development after decades of mismanagement by political rivals invoking Sant Ravi Das on his birth anniversary Modi said his BJP led government in the center was following ideals of the 15th century saint philosopher and that the welfare of the poor was above everything else for it he said if voted to power in the state the bjp led alliance will make farming trade and industry profitable in 5 years mujhe 5 saal aapki seva karne ka mauka dijiye main aapko bharosa deta hu मैं आपको भरोसा देता हूं किसानी व्यापार इंडस्ट्री नो लाहे बंद बनाया जाएगा मीन वाइल आम आदमी पार्टी कन्वीनर अरविंद केजरीवाल हेल्ड द रोड शो इन पंजाब जलंधर सिटी ऑन वेंसडे पॉलिटिकल एनालिस्ट से अ कॉन्टेस्ट इज फॉर्मिंग बिटवीन द आम आदमी पार्टी एंड द कांग्रेस वाइल बीजेपी इज अनलाइकली टू फीचर इन द रनिंग इन पंजाब द कांग्रेस करेंटली होल्ड्स पावर ओनली इन पंजाब वाइल बीजेपी होल्ड्स उत्तर प्रदेश उत्तराखंड गोवा एंड मणिपुर द फोर अदर स्टेट्स दैट गो टू वोट दिस मंथ Legendary Indian singer and musician Bappi Lahiri who was known for his groovy disco tunes died on Wednesday at the age of 69 in Western Mumbai city. He was ailing for some time and died due to obstructive sleep apnea. His cremation will be held on Thursday. Personalities from all walks of life mourned his death with many remembering their favorite songs. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said he was saddened by Lahiri's death. Legendary Bollywood singer composer Bappi Lahiri passed away on Tuesday night at the age of 69 in Western Mumbai's Kritike Hospital. After recovering from COVID-19 last year, Lahiri was ailing for some time and died due to obstructive sleep apnea, a condition he had been suffering from since 2021. An official statement was released by the late composer's family where it was announced that the funeral will take place on Thursday at Pavan Hans Crematorium. अभी अभी उनका बेटा आ रहा है अमेरिका से पप्पा जो मेरा दामाद है वो भी रात को आएंगे दो बजे फिर कल का हमने सोचा है फ्यूनरल का महेंद्र डॉटर तनिश्वर इज मैरिड टू बप्पी लाहरी सन बप्पा हु इज करेंटली इन लॉस एंजलिस एज द न्यूज ऑफ बप्पी लाहरी डेथ बिकेम पब्लिक ऑन वेंसडे मॉर्निंग ट्रिब्यूट्स बिगैन पोरिंग इन पर्सनैलिटीज फ्रॉम ऑल वर्क्स ऑफ लाइफ इंक्लूडिंग प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी पे ट्रिब्यूट टू लाहरी पी एम सेड ही वॉज सारन बाई लाहरी डेथ Best known for popularizing disco song to the Indian mainstream in the 80s and the 90s, the singer was fondly known as Bapida. He was style icon for many and was always seen sporting gleaming gold chains and bracelets. He delivered popular songs in several films like Chalte Chalte, Disco Dancer, and Sharabi. In news from Pakistan, opposition parties in Pakistan have rejected the recent hike in fuel prices and demanded the government reverse the decision saying it has dropped an atom bomb on people of Pakistan 
Prime Minister Imran Khan's government on Tuesday jacked up the price of petrol by up to 12 rupees, the highest ever price hike in one go. A week after, Finance Minister Shokat Tareen said that the government cannot lower petroleum product prices artificially. The Pakistan government on Tuesday jacked up the price of petrol by up to Rs 12.03 per litre, citing an increase in the price of crude oil in the international market. The move has received sharp criticism from all opposition parties, including PPP and the PMLN, which have demanded Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI-led government to reverse the decision, saying it has dropped an atom bomb on the common people. Shadi Rahman, Vice President of Opposition Pakistan People's Party, said in a tweet, it is time that the tyrant anti-people government is ousted. और तकरीबन 9 रुपए डीजल की कीमतों में जो इजाफा वफाकी हुकूमत कर रही है उससे जो महंगाई बरपा होगी पाकिस्तान भर में वो जिस तरीके से एक आम आदमी को मिडिल क्लास को लोअर इनकम आदमी को غربت کی طرف دھکیلے گی پریشانی کی طرف دھکیلے گی میں سمجھتا ہوں وقت آ گیا ہے کہ پاکستانی عوام کے سامنے یہ چیز عیاں ہو چکی ہے The inflation rate in Pakistan steeply rose to a 2 year high of 13% in January a raise in fuel prices was well expected after the government passed a media budget last month and withdrew tax exemptions in a bid to control the fiscal deficit, a move meant to revive a stalled International Monetary Fund program. Moving on, Pakistan's MQM Mutahida Qaumi Movement founder leader Altaf Hussain has been acquitted of terror charges and declared non-guilty in a hate speech case. Hussein was charged with a terrorism offence in the UK in 2019 in connection with the speech relayed to followers in Pakistan in 2016 that allegedly encouraged violence. After deliberations that spanned three days, a 12-member jury on Tuesday declared that they found Hussein not to be in violation of the UK's anti-terrorism laws. Altaf Hussain's MQM, a mainstream political party of the Mohajir community, has dominated Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, since the 1980s. When security forces cracked down on the party in the 1990s, Altaf Hussain sought asylum in the United Kingdom. Even from exile in London, Hussain has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's military and often blames it of using force to muzzle dissenting voices in the country. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's economy has continued to deteriorate with inflation for basic household goods reaching nearly 42% in January compared to the year earlier period, according to the World Bank. Six months since the Taliban came to power in Kabul in August last year, residents of the capital remain uncertain about their future. Six months since the Taliban came to power in Afghanistan, Kabul residents remain uncertain about the future, citing lack of jobs, assets that remain frozen, as well as an increase in hunger and poverty. On Tuesday, the streets of Kabul bustled with crowds and stalls set up by vendors, marking exactly six months since Taliban seized power. تفاوتی که شش ماهی که امارات اسلامی آمده کار باری ترا نیستک دیگه هم اگه چیز فراوان است ولی کار نیستک سابقه شش ماه پیش از شش ماه کار بار بود همه مردم کار بود از هر چیز بود حال یک کمه کار کاربار مردم بیاد رقم در چیز فقر گشنگی و ترا زیادتر شده رد دی سنترال بانک فاندز هاف بین فروزن سنس دی طالبان تو اوور دی کنٹری از فورن فورسز ویتو ان اگست دی فروزن فاندنگ کمبائنڈ وت سانکشنز اند ا ڈراپ اف ان ڈویلپمنٹ فاندنگ have sent the country's economy into free fall, unleashing a humanitarian crisis. In the past, we have to say that if we have to say that the Islamic government is not going to be able to do it, we will be able to do it. But if we have to say that the Islamic government is not going to be able to do it, we will be able to do it. Last week, Afghanistan's central bank criticized Washington's plan to use half of the bank's $7 billion in frozen assets on U.S. soil for humanitarian aid and set aside the rest to possibly satisfy lawsuits over the September 11, 2001 attacks. The Taliban warned it would reconsider its policy towards the U.S. if President Biden did not reverse his decision to return only half the amount. Meanwhile, the Islamic Emirate delegation led by acting Foreign Minister Malvi Amir Khan Mutakki held talks with European Union's representatives in Doha on Tuesday 
and discussed Afghanistan's requirements as well as humanitarian, health and education situation, according to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The EU representative showed readiness to increase humanitarian aid as well as health and education assistance to Afghanistan. The Islamic Emirate delegation also held talks with Qatari officials from several civil service and education institutions. According to political analysts, Qatar is one of the countries that wants to play a mediating role between the Taliban government and the world in an effort that is more focused on bilateral interaction. Two leopard cats were released back in the wild at Pakistan's Margala Hills this weekend after their rescue from poachers in Karachi city. The rare cats, both male, were rescued by the Sindh Wildlife Department after the team was informed by locals that an illegal sale was taking place in the birds market in the port city of Karachi. The price tag on both cats in total was 200,000 Pakistani rupees, that is 1,141 US dollars. They were kept in Karachi's Sindh Wildlife Department before being transported to the Margala Hills National Park's Rescue Centre, where caretakers and doctors assessed the cats before they were released back into the wild. The poachers of the leopards are currently in custody and being interrogated. According to wildlife officials, leopard cats are mainly hunted to be kept as pets but also for their fur. <laughs> और उनसे अभी हम तफ्तीश कर रहे हैं कि आया ये कौन ले के आया किस तरीके से लाया है और इतने नायाब नस्ल को कैसे इन्होंने पकड़ा उस पे तफ्तीश जारी है और बाकी इन पे जो वाइल्ड लाइफ के कानून के मुताबिक कार्रवाई है वो की जाएगी इन पे इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम नेपाल नेपाल्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर शेर बहादुर दियोबा हैज एग्रीड नॉट टू टेबल एमसीसी the Millennium Challenge Cooperation Compact in the Parliament after the CPN Mavis Center threatened to quit the coalition government if the $500 million US grant agreement is introduced without amendments. The meeting of the ruling alliance called for Thursday will take a decision on the matter, reports suggest. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba agreed not to table MCC, the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact in the Parliament during Wednesday's proceedings. After the CPN Maoist Centre led by Pushpa Kamal Dehel threatened to quit the coalition government if the US grant agreement is introduced without amendments. The meeting of the ruling alliance will take a decision on the matter on Thursday, local media reports suggested, while protests also continued over the issue. Under the MCC deal, Nepal signed an agreement with the US to receive development grant assistance worth 500 million US dollars in 2017. As part of it, Nepal is expected to develop roads and an electricity grid. But critics fear there is a military component in it and that Nepal's sovereignty would be at stake if it is ratified by the parliament. Meanwhile, the opposition CP and UML continue to obstruct the House for the 162nd day, leading to adjournment of proceedings till Friday. The party has been demanding the resignation of Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota, accusing him of not fulfilling his duties by not removing the 14 lawmakers from their posts, against whom the CP and UML had requested the Speaker to take action. Showcasing the scenic beauty of India's Jammu and Kashmir and harnessing its sports and tourism potential, a winter carnival was organized by authorities in Kulgam district this week. Scores of sport enthusiasts participated in the three-day-long carnival, which witnessed snow games including rugby, snow volleyball and skiing. A three-day winter carnival was organized in Gulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir this week to attract tourists and promote scenic beauty and tourism in the area. Participants belonging from different sports fields competed in various sports activities including cricket, snow volleyball matches, skiing, snow rugby, tug of war, among other games that were held in the carnival amid heavy snow. Taurus loaded the efforts by the district authorities and call it a promising initiative. This winter carnival that is going on here, it is a very promising initiative from the district administration and also the tourism department of the district. And I would say like tourism is something which is an emerging and the most potential sector as far as district Kulgam is concerned. We know about many beautiful places like Sonmar, Gulmarg and all in Kerala. But there are as beautiful places in this district also which is yet to be explored. Tourism is one of the main sources of income for Jammu and Kashmir. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the tourism sector in Union territory suffered huge losses 
in the past two consecutive tourism seasons. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this safety. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.